Hi, everybody. How do we use the built-in analog pins on the Arduino board to read voltage? So I've opened the Arduino software. This is 1.8.13. I don't know what the latest one is, and you don't really need the latest one. If you're using an HISD laptop, you can use whatever version is on the software center. You can download it from arduino.cc and install your the IDE on your Mac or your PC. There's even a Linux version. There is a web version, but you have to install a special driver. And you know, I'm, I'm not recommending you try and figure that out unless you are just really keen to do it. So the IDE or integrated development environment, which is a programming environment, it opened up the default chunk of code, which is called Blink. And uh, hopefully you've been playing with that one already. But I want to show you how to read voltage. So if you go to File, and we go to Examples, and we go to Basics, so 01 point Basics. And then you'll notice there's one here called, uh, well, all of these. There's Blink again, by the way. There's also one called Fade, which is a fun one to play with. But I want to open Read Analog Voltage. So you don't even have to write any of the code. The voltage, uh, the voltmeter, code is there for you. So that makes it easier to do. Notice some things in here. First of all, one through 11, those are comments. If I haven't already talked about those before, that's a big block comment. So the little beings that live inside the computer that speak Arduino, they're ignoring lines one through 11. Line 13 is also a comment, but it's just one line. So the comments are meant for humans. So someone wrote this for students and people who are learning Arduinos. So you'll notice that it's very common for uh, someone to have written comments for you to understand what's going on. So uh, there is something we need to notice here on line 16. It's reading at a rate of 9600 baud or bits per second, which is literally the ones and the zeros. So when we connect our uh, Arduino board, we need to make sure we know that this program is expecting to read 9,600 bits every second. Okay, so how do we do that? If you go to tools and you go to board, you'll notice that it's got a big list of boards. Yours is probably already on Arduino Uno. If not, select Arduino Uno. That's the one we're using. And then go back to tools and go to port. And you're gonna need to do this for your particular computer. So I'm using a Macintosh. It All of the serial ports are labeled slash dev slash something, in this case, cu dot. Yours is gonna have, oops, under port, yours is gonna have the words Arduino Uno next to it, whatever yours is. So that's gonna be true for Windows. That's gonna be true for Macintosh. And if you don't see uh, a port that says Arduino Uno, try plugging the USB cable into a different port on your computer. Try unplugging the Arduino and plugging it back in. Sometimes you have to do this a couple of times before it shows up in the menu. So I'm gonna select Arduino Uno. And then I'm just gonna go back to tools and show you that it's been checked and the Arduino board's been checked. And uh, we're actually, I think, ready to try this out. So if everything has worked correctly, when I hit the little arrow here, which means the upload arrow, um, oh wait, hang on, we do need to notice a couple of other things. Where are we reading voltage? Because in a moment I'm gonna switch over and show you how to actually plug it into the Arduino board. We have to use the pin A0. So when we're plugging our, we're actually building the board, we're physically gonna have to connect the pin that's gonna read the voltage into the board because our code is expecting it to be there. So this is called physical computing because we're taking sensors in the real world and bringing that data into our computer to process it, okay? Um, and I, the only other thing I'll point out here is on line 24, the sensor value, which can go, notice what line 23 says, we need to convert the analog reading. So the, the Arduino reads uh, any number from zero, so there's no voltage on that analog pin, all the way up to 1023. So that's 1,024 different values. And if you're familiar with anything in computer science, you'll recognize that that's a power of two. And that tells you something about the uh, how many uh, bits this particular pin can read. That doesn't matter. But we need to convert it from anywhere from 0 to 1023. We need to convert that to voltage. And we know the Arduino is running at 5 volts. So what we're doing on line 24 is dividing by 1023 
so that we know what ratio of 1023 we're in. Remember, it can go from 0 to 1023, and we're multiplying by 5. So this stuff in parentheses, that factor, 5 divided by 1023, that allows us to convert the sensor value from a kind of useless binary representation of the number, not quite binary, but close, to what we're expecting, 5 volts. So that's very common with Arduino. You often have to do some math to get the data from computer speak into physics speak. And then at the very bottom there, we're printing it out. Okay, so let's hit upload and see if everything works correctly. Notice it says compiling, and let's see if I can make this a little bigger. It has already compiled, it already uploaded. Notice that this says 2992 bytes, so 2.9 kilobytes, and that's 9% of the space on board my Arduino board. <laughs> So they're not very big. They're not meant for holding very complicated programs. They can only hold one at a time. And I know you've already been told this because you, you've been through the blink. But when the Arduino starts, it runs lines 13 through 17 once. It does the setup once. So I guess 14 through 17. In this case, all it's doing is setting up the serial port to, to talk to the computer. But it will do the loop chunk, so from lines 20 through 27, automatically the Arduino will run loop, and as soon as it's over, it'll run it again, and as soon as it's over, it'll run it again. So it's going to read the analog voltage, convert it into a, a, a number with a decimal instead of an integer, uh, and then print it out. And then read the voltage, convert it into a decimal, print it out. And it's going to do that as fast as the Arduino board can do it, and then it's going to dump that data onto um, uh, the computer through pin zero on our Arduino board. All right, let's switch over to the iPhone view of the Arduino board. Okay, so view from the Arduino. So I've plugged a different wire, and it just, again, it doesn't matter what color lead you use. I've plugged it into A0, because that's what I, the code told me, or if I wrote the code, that's what I told it, that I'll be reading voltage from the analog port. So not digital, but the analog port, okay? So notice my wire here. Let's back off a little. You can see it. So if I grab this thing, this is my voltmeter. So you can physically touch it, to a, a, a place on the board, or you can plug it, sorry y'all, or you can plug it in. Don't forget though, that you have to have your, your voltage reading pin plugged into the same row. Now if you want, you can physically touch the wires. That's actually okay, right? So I wanna show you how to do that. So excuse me while we pan up here. There's the code we were just looking at. And what I wanna do is I wanna go to tools, and I'm going to go to notice that all of this is actually running. But if I go to serial monitor, as long as I'm at 9,600 baud bits per second, this thing is reading voltage as fast as possible. It's currently reading 2.54, 2.54. So wait, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it. Oops, I unplugged this for y'all and I made a mess. Here, plug it back in. Sorry, y'all. Give me a second. Sausage fingers. There, wait. So A0, and now I plugged it into row eight. Now look what it says. That's five volts. And that makes sense because I've plugged it before, I'm looking at the voltage before I've gone into any resistors. So now I'm gonna move it from, I'm so sorry to make the video jump around, but it's fine. Now I've moved it to row 18. So it's, it's after one resistor and before the other. And now look, the voltage is two and a half. And then hang on, one last thing. I can go to the last spot, oh, if I can get it to go in there. There we go, sorry y'all. Now I'm at the other end. So I'm hoping y'all could guess that that's gonna be a zero. Oops, I hit it. Notice it's not perfect. It's reading a little voltage. I probably knocked something loose there. So don't be afraid to, you know, hang on. Yeah, I definitely didn't have it plugged all the way in. So uh, th what we're doing here is by physically using, let me show you one more time, the, the yellow lead plugged into A0, that is our way to read voltage. Now, automatically, the other side of this built-in voltmeter is the ground, okay? So you don't have a choice. So it's not a perfect solution. It's better to use a voltmeter, um, which literally I've got one right here, y'all. 
I mean, it would be better to use voltmeters, but we're not in person. So this is not a bad technique. We can actually use the Arduino to read the voltage for us and uh, have it on the computer. And that's a pretty cool technique. We're gonna be using this. Um, oh, by the way, now you can see these amber LEDs are on, the transmit light. So the Arduino is transmitting through the USB cable plugged into my Mac. I'm transmitting the data from analog zero. So what we're doing now is we're actually using the power pins, which are not smart. They're just on. If the Arduino is turned on, these are on. You don't even have to write any code to use those. But I do have to write code to use the analog pins or these digital pins over here. So if you notice, by the way, there's another ground over there, which helps. So when you are trying to like actually control your circuit and make things do certain things, you've got to write code so that you can access either the analog or the digital pins. But the power over here, the three volt, the five volt, the ground, they're actually always on as long as the Arduino is plugged in. So just one more look at our circuit. We're plugged in at A0 and currently I've got it on 26, which is at the end of my circuit. So of course I'm reading zero volts. If I plug it on into 18, I'll read the voltage uh, after the first but before the second and if I plug it into eight I'll read it before anything so I better see five volts at eight and zero volts at 26 and then I can actually measure the voltage in between so now we can actually verify Ohm's law for our circuit cool